Hello, everyone, and welcome to Junie in a Podcast. I have the most special guest. This is like a collab episode because we, we have Tamberlin from That's Hot, if he didn't ever put the connection together. Yeah. We're a whole production company. We have podcasts about everything. Yes, we do. Very professional. Let us know in the comments if you want us to create a podcast about whatever subject. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we have. Yes. Oh, and it's also super special because we're in the same place and we were just sitting here on the couch, just rambling about random stuff. And then eventually, of course, because it's me, Christina comes up and then we were just rambling. I was like, hey, let's just record this. So So I was alive, obviously, during the rise of Christina Aguilera. But we were talking about, I guess, just the pop star era of that. And I did not know that her and Britney Spears had beef. It's just so weird that you did not know that. Of course, I saw all of the like grocery store tabloids yeah. and stuff. But they do that to everyone, you so, know, comparison. Especially women. With, yes, yeah. women specifically. But it's so interesting that I had no idea you were telling me that they started off as best friends. They were really close, especially whenever they were on um, Mickey Mouse Club. And see, like I was going with the whole knowledge of, oh, yeah, they used to be on Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. So when I would see all the like tabloids or whatever, like, oh, yeah, maybe they didn't like each other back then. Like they were the two cool girls or like the cool, talented girls on the show, obviously, because they make it out. And yeah, maybe they just don't like each other. Like they didn't like each other back then. But they were friends. They were friends. Actually, really liked each other. And actually, so like they were like the youngest of uh, that newer crop of people. Mm hmm. So they had a lot in common, um, you know, so Mickey Mouse Club got canceled mm-hmm. and both went back to their trailer park roots. Just kidding. Oh, so sad. Well, actually not so kidding with Brittany. So yeah. Yes. So she did go back to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Christina went back to like Staten Island and, you know, it wasn't until her like later teens where they were like scouting potential like record okay. labels. And then of course, Brittany came out first, but they were both like still, you know, cause it takes a lot to get a record label. Mm-hmm. So they were both probably still doing industry stuff or trying to get seen, but. Brittany came out with the album first and so of course uh, Christina was always kind of like in the shadow or always getting comparisons to Brittany. So Christina is a Jersey girl? Oh she's kind of she's an army brat actually. Oh interesting. Yeah because I think at some point she lived in Houston but she also lived in Japan Mm. for a time. She has influences in like some of her visuals and songs and stuff that like she picks up on that time that she spent there. I don't know why San Antonio I think but anyway yeah so for the whenever she fled her and her mom fled uh, her dad's, like, terror. Mm-hmm. They ended up in Staten Island. Oh, no, Pittsburgh. Brandon. Well, because that's where, like, her grandma was. So, okay, like, so family. Yeah. So according to the timeline of things, it says both Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears rose to fame in the late 90s as teen pop stars. They were often compared to each other due to their similar career trajectories, blonde hair, and young age at the time of their debut. Yes. Now, when they came out, they both came out in 1999, mm-hmm. but Britney first, yeah. Baby One More Time, and then Christina Aguilera self-titled. And it says the media often pit these two against each other, portraying them as rivals, a vine for the ultimate spot of like pop princess. But I don't think that was necessarily true for just regular fans. Really? Like, I didn't feel like I had to choose between the two of them because their music was not the same. Oh, you're so elevated. <laughs> Because, like, I appreciate it. I definitely thoroughly enjoy Britney. But it was always like, a, I don't know, which one are you? It was kind of like the equivalent of Beyonce versus Rihanna. But then they kind of shifted because that started to happen. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like, they're totally different artists. Totally different. So it's weird that they wouldn't let her them get away with it. Because even Britney and Christina, they bring totally different, like, things to the table. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. Me too. Her fashion moments, all the things. But I would never stand in front of a crowd or judge anybody and say, oh, that girl can sing. Right. She did have, like, this X factor. And so, like, obviously she could dance. And she had, like, that presence on stage. Yes. But, okay, I've seen a lot of people live. Yeah. The great Whitney Houston. She didn't dance at all. And uh, neither did Mariah. Mariah Carey. It does Mariah Carey. And she stands up there and they com- command a stadium, command an arena of people. Yeah. So you, and that's just my opinion. I'm sure there are other people that feel differently. Yeah. But you being able to dance for me is an aside. It's like, okay, that's cool mm-hmm. that you can do that. But if you can't sing, you're a dancer. You could be a backup dancer. Totally. For Christina. Yeah. I don't value, <laughs> I don't value that as far as, you know, a form of entertainment that though, you're an extra in the movie. Yes. Yeah, especially since in the beginning, like, I don't want to down Britney, but she wasn't, like, writing her music. But in the first album, she, like, neither girl was writing their own music. So that's why they also pitted them against each other. They were just, like, manufactured products of the industry. Well, that's kind of how everyone was back then. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so gay kept. 
Yeah. And I guess because I don't want to, I want to put this out there just because people will be like, well, actually, Christina came out first because she did, because uh, she did Reflection for Mulan. Oh, that's true. And, and that I think was, that was a 97 hit. or something. Really? Yes. That was the best song of the whole soundtrack. It's true. Oh, I don't know. There's so many gems on Mulan. And then did they, wait, did they end up putting a Leo on that or something? Where, on the on Reflections? Did they? Oh my gosh, you're going to make me think about that now. Oh my gosh, I don't remember anything Because I definitely heard the Christina version and I remember that. Okay, yes. Maybe Aaliyah was on a different song. Oh, okay, but she was on the soundtrack? Yes. What? Christina Aguilera, she killed that. Best yeah. song of the, of the movie. Kind of the song that sums up the movie as well. Yeah, it is the whole like, mm-hmm. story of it. Excellent. But there's so many gems on that album, that soundtrack. She says... And then it's obvious, like we're discussing now, Christina Aguilera was often considered to have the better vocal abilities while Britney Spears was seen as having a more marketable image and stage presence. That is racist. Kind of. Well, at this point, people, I don't know why people didn't connect it because of obviously her ethnic last name, mm-hmm. but a lot of people just figured she was white, which I guess she is white, but ethnically she's not. You know? Yeah. Like that still matters. That's right. why I don't like it when people try to make America seem like this homogenized, yeah. everybody's cool, because it's not. Because even if you exhibit something as different as just the last name, but you're presenting side by side the same, y'all could be sisters, cousins, There's blonde hair. Bias. There's still a bias. Yeah. And you're going to say Britney Spears is more marketable because why? Because she's an all-American girl. She's from totally. Louisiana. Her- Speaking of which, I'm totally going to put a clip maybe on socials or something. But every time, it doesn't even have to be like multiple people, at least. The guy who did Star Search, mm-hmm. Christina was on there. And I guess a couple of times he had to say her name. And I can stitch them all together, but he never could say her last name. Yeah, she's butchering it. Yeah. It's not even hard. Yeah. And then... Also, I hate the way that British people say Ag- Aguilera. Aguilera. Ugh. I don't know. It's Ugh. gross. That colonialism got their throat caught yeah. up. Yeah. I Now we're talking about this ethnic. I'm trying to think back. Did they even made her appear more ethnic in her music videos and stuff at, in comparison to Britney. Perhaps. They definitely used it to their advantage because like immediately, you know, she came out with her debut and then, you know. Mira Reflejo, which is her Spanish language album that came out shortly after. Which obviously they did that because she is has the Spanish like Latin last name. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Britney Spears. Because I'm an MTV. I'm a TRL kid. Yeah. Hit me, baby, one more time. It's her first video, right? Mm-hmm. Or oops. No, hit me one more time. Okay, hit me one more time. You're a schoolgirl. Yeah. A sexy schoolgirl in America that is, it's nasty, but that was like culturally acceptable back then for grown men and people to be lusting after Mm -hmm. this little girl with her pigtails and everything. And then even sexing it up, having her skirt shirt tied up and all these things. Americana. But Christina is on a beach, more covered up, baggy pants. That's true. Dancing with a group. Like, like a black girl, like she's in a, like she's a Destiny Child member. You're making her appear more ethnic. Interesting that you say Destiny Child also, because at one point, I think uh, two times, like with her debut album, she toured the first time I think she headlined and uh, Destiny's Child opened up for okay. her. But whenever she went out again, she opened up for TLC. Oh, no. So it's interesting that she wasn't just pure pop. No, because Christina, and that's what we were talking about that kind of got us to decide to record. Because she is, how she presents, how she sings, her vocal arrangements, how the style of singing is more so aligned with the Black musical tradition. Mm -hmm. I could put Christina up on a stage, or a better example that is current, people would understand. When a singing legend in Black culture dies... An Aretha Franklin. Um, we've someone else. I don't want to wish dead on any of our oh, other Whitney. Women. Whitney Houston. Yeah. They have other singers come out to their funeral and do tribute oh, yeah. and sing for them. Not a soul, a black soul, would ever consider inviting Miss Spears, even though she's from Louisiana. Yeah. And all the down home girl, all these things, it would never happen because you cannot sing. Christina could easily be called up there. And she has. She did uh, a tribute mm-hmm. uh, with several women. Yes, for Aretha, mm-hmm. she performed at Etta James's funeral. There you go. And then she was tapped by like Whitney's family, like personally, to do the tribute. We won't talk about the tribute. <laughs> and what do the other girls have? In the words of Aretha, beautiful gowns. <laughs> totally beautiful gowns. Yeah, because she's talking about Taylor Swift. 
<laughs> totally. Oh my gosh. Beautiful gowns. That's, that's, that's lovely gowns. That's all that they have. Yeah. Christina will get up there and belt it out. And that's why some people like we, that you talked about on a prior episode, like pink hated on her so badly Yeah. because pink was cosplaying black and she thought she was going to come through and be the big vocals on Lady Marmalade. Totally. And it's like, no, you're mad that she has better representation than you and they can fight for her. But still pink, your voice is not the same. You can do certain things, yeah. but it's not that like that. So why you'd even want to compare it doesn't make sense. Right. So then they were compared to each other and there was always some like weird animosity. And this is before like social media. So they couldn't just like nip it in the bud. They would, you know, of course, before we even had cell phones. So mm-hmm. they couldn't just phone each other up and be like, yeah, hey, I heard you talking shit about me. Mm-hmm. No. So you know, my people and your people. Yeah. Or through magazines. Mm-hmm. Like, put it, That's even them. worse. Yes. So that's something that Christina's brought up that like now, like the more current era, like it's nice because you can just like easily squash it, tweet it, like whatever. That's true. Um, And things can be cleared up. Thinking about that also leads into like so many other situations that probably just got drug out and exacerbated because yeah there is no conversation you this person might live in LA you might live in New York but you're constantly seeing these magazines and and it's making it seem like this person is talking about you because you could misquote someone totally you could oh I can't imagine so the rivalry between these two singers reached its peak at the 2000 MTV Music Video Music Awards when Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears performed with Missy and Madonna. Was that the kiss? 2003. Weren't both of them on stage when that happened? Yeah, because that was, I think, at least 2003 because Christina already had black hair and she, that means that she was already touring with Stripped and Stripped in 2002. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So Madonna was promoting an alb- uh, her new album and it was kind of like a passing of the torch because, you know, Madonna's like the queen of pop. Yes. And then who does she have come out and sing? Uh, like a Virgin. Of course, she has the two princesses of pop. Mm-hmm. And then that was an interesting moment just because another moment kind of like stolen from Christina because Britney had just broken up, I believe, with um, Justin Timberlake. Mm. And I think he was coming out with, oh, well, he had already come out with, you know, Crimey River and he was talking what a shit big, about Britney. A big old bitch. Yes. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so, you know, so the, the kiss happened mm-hmm. and that was... You know, everybody always talks about the kiss with Britney, but people forget about Christina was there because they panned to get Justin's reaction to Britney's kiss. Mm-hmm. So and we she, got like a glimpse of only yeah. Christina. Yeah. Yes. Which, by the way, uh, of the people on the stage, uh, Britney's mic was not on of the four ladies. I would like to make a revelation to the American public that that mic has never been on at any time. Yeah. And I will never forgive y'all for what you did to Ashley Simpson. You drag her. You made fun of her. Like that was not common practice. I know, right? Come on now. At least she was attempting, even though it was bad. Even though it was bad. Yeah. At least she was actually singing. Britney Spears probably be up there miming the word. She's not even letting it come out. But to just prove, to make this more fair, that this is not a Britney bashing situation. Absolutely not. Justin Timberlake is a, the biggest bitch because <laughs> she had an abortion and then you put that song out, Cry Me a River. Yeah. You're a dirtbag. Totally. Ew, ew, ew. He's getting the karma. He's definitely getting the karma now. He deserves yeah. it. And he's aging terribly. Yes. And well, just... also because of Janet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're a repeat offender. Yep. Bad bitches everywhere should unite against you and just wish you harm, wish you ill. And then you marry Jessica Beale from 7th Heaven. So random. Just mm, 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 mm. our society. Yeah. And I, I can't also say that Christina was not uh, guilty because she definitely would like to, she did speak up. And I feel like more recently, not more recently, but after the certain like messy era and it was around stripped and stuff. And I think that whole time is like whenever they were like most pitted about each other. Mm. And Christina was like over it. Plus she's always been like, quote unquote, the bitch because she didn't want to get like you know, ran over and just, it was probably was the same thing. She up for herself? Yes, exactly. And so that's why everybody says that she's difficult. But she has said some shady things about Britney. But um, I feel like they've repeatedly had to like, not absolve them, but like they've made amends yeah. repeatedly. Yeah, so and... they come out to show support for each other. Like Right. I think anytime you have ongoing hate with the person, like if you have some type of bitter rivalry that just lasts for years and years, there's an element of love there. Yeah. Because if you hate a person, you would disregard them. Right. She, yeah, they both said, well, Brittany's probably said less things about Christina back in the day. And more recently, it's been like Brittany has kind of like shaded her Christina and or her dancers mm-hmm. and whatever. 
And so that's why whenever somebody had done a, an interview, I think she was on Jimmy Kimmel, but Christina went on there and she was like, he asked her, are you nervous about what Britney, you know, have you heard anything about Britney's book? Have you read it? Like, are you nervous about what she's going to say about you? And I think Christina handled it well because, you know, nobody knew at that point, like what was going to be written about her. And Britney didn't say anything bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that was good. It's interesting. You would think that, well, I guess that's hard, right? You People mm-hmm. always expect that, but you would think with such a similar path and like knowing each other and all that, that would be a source of comfort to you like maybe you could confide in each other because no one else understands your specific situation right totally and actually speaking on that so whenever christina was doing the promo for her newest uh spanish project and it was like she showed up to the latin grammys to promote it it was on the red carpet where somebody was asking about britney and that was after britney had just been freed uh, of her conservatorship so a person asked her you know album questions but then threw in at the last second you know what do you feel about britney and there's like a meme and it's like you know like we're not here for that but i'm happy for her Mm -hmm. and they're like facial expression and then after that of course people already don't really like love christina Mm -hmm. so then people were like wow she's like such a bitch to you know britney like and then it was interesting because britney you know, newly out of her conservatorship, had free access of her cell phone. Mm-hmm. So she went on there and well, like kind of not bashed her, but she called Christina out. She's like, you should have spoken up. Like now you don't want to talk about, I forgot what it was, but I'll find the context and I'll put it on a social. But she put a story and was like, you knew what was going on. Kind of like saying as if Christina knew that she was getting taken advantage of by her like parents or something. What can I do about that girl? Yes. It's also not her, any of her business. Mm-mm. Like, and it's your family doing it to you. Yeah. I get it. If it was some outside person, then mm-hmm. maybe, yeah, a friend or anybody you knew in passing be like, hey, that's wrong. What's going on there? But it's your family. Yes. So, so she kind of like called her out and said like, you knew this was happening to me and like, you should have stuck up. Like, you don't want, you need to speak out about these things. And then the next slide, because, you know, a ham, I think I call, by the way, Lady Gaga a ham for, or a turkey for attention. Okay. She's such a ham. Yeah. She loves it. And she was one to be like super vocal. I also, what I love about Christina is that she doesn't need all the, notar- she doesn't need all the social like validations, like tweeting and showing the pictures and yeah, cause it's fake. fake. She will talk to artists, you know, like she has like relationships with all these other artists, but she's like actually getting to know them. Like she's going to text them or something. Um, meanwhile, of course, Lady Gaga is like over you know, the moon about Britney's newly being free. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, thank you so much, Lady Gaga for speaking out and being there there and an awesome person whatever like right after she like kind of dissed christina and then also there's like a weird like mood with christina and lady gaga which is probably for another podcast actually i'm gonna record that next week that's so crazy because that goes into bionic Hmm. we'll just give you like a glimpse but um lady gaga and Perez Hilton, who was big at the time, yes. sabotaged Bionic. And that's, you know, they helped to bring Christina down to her, like, her lowest. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. So. That's... But since then, Lady Gaga and Christina are copacetic, at least. Okay. I guess the last thing we could talk about for the Britney-Christina rivalry has to be the looks. Fashion looks. Oh, okay. So what we were saying was that Britney, even from her debut aesthetic, it was like, okay, sexy schoolgirl, slutty schoolgirl, but yeah, not urban. Yeah. Not ethnic at all. Christina Aguilera, she's in her orange joggers and her crop top, and she's dancing mm-hmm. on the beach with mm-hmm. her multicultural friends. Yes. And it's a genie in a bottle song. True. Then later on, what the big song is, what is what is Britney's song out that's with Dirty is out? She kind of took a hiatus, and then after that, mm-hmm. it was Me Against the Music. But before that, I think people would probably say like slave for you okay so slave was also very sick the most sexually charged that she had got up to that point Mm -hmm. but people still made it seem like christina aguilera was the biggest hoe in the world yes because she was wearing a school a a mini school girl skirt britney wore that years ago yeah and like chap so she's more covered even than she was Mm -hmm. you may be showing a little panty but okay she had her whole major foul she had her shirt tied up and she was a minor at the time yeah so you're dancing in the right context too in like this boxing thing so you're like a ring girl yeah makes sense and you're grown as hell nobody you they're making it seem like you're a slut you're a bad influence i remember all the propaganda that was out about it not trying to pull the video just crazy stuff britney's slave for you she's dipped in dirt in oil she got pan so low that her vagina is almost showing top is just disheveled rags covering 
Oh, it's true. It's like a bra and then separate pieces on her yes. arms. Yeah. And she's dancing all sexually suggestive and all that. How and is she it also different? had chaps on that. How is it different? But again, oh, she's more marketable. She's more because she's white with a white last name. Yeah. Then toxic. She butt naked. But that crystal like Swarovski or whatever. But nobody. Yeah. It's not. It's okay. And even before that, she did, you know, Oops, I Did It Again on the VMA, I remember, where she tore off all her clothes. Oh, And yes. she was like some, you know, yeah, simulating of being nude. Especially back then. Yeah. Um, and then before, even in the video for that she's wearing that red latex yeah very sexual totally i want to know people what is the difference if we cut the last names off how is that any i don't think it is i think right. that people were being it's crazy to think that a person that is white presenting could still be you know being racist against totally they're discriminated and it's crazy because like even within that to like where she's white wide enough like passing especially within her own like so like say it take latino oh yeah for the yeah. latino because there's definitely colorism between that mm-hmm. but she's like the ideal yes version of the, yes yes but even still within the white america whatever not white enough she's trash i'm afraid my dear you should have changed that last name yeah and, and they tried to get her change her last name by the way i bet yeah i bet what would her fake last name would have been I don't know. She was trying to remember because I think, so whenever she was doing her promo for that Spanish record, Aguilera, go stream it. Um, she was mentioning, yeah, that they tried to change her name like at the beginning of her career mm-hmm. because you know, marketing. Yeah. And so, you know, she's felt like it is a part of her and like whatever. And she didn't want to like let it go. She is a very stern, I'm going to stand on what I believe. Yes. And I appreciate that, about, especially if celebrity, because most of them are not Yeah. very shallow, very hollow people. So to stand on, especially being so young too mm-hmm. like you've already had a taste of fame mickey mouse club and they're maybe dangling this in front of you so like if you just change your last name christina stevenson no good. you can be rich and famous oh my God. no and then well i think because uh, it's another reason we started talking about her is because like i appreciate her why i think she's stuck up for herself is because she's so used to being bullied mm-hmm from like even when she was in elementary school or whatever and she was singing like the national anthem at her like local hockey rink or whatever and you know like she would be on morning shows like her local station okay seeing like show uh, stuff and then star search and then she'd come back you know after doing star search she still has to go back to her elementary school or middle school and mm-hmm. and they're like oh you didn't win what are you like a loser you know? yeah so you're getting bullied by regular people yeah. i think that it does build a little bit more and then character. of course like there's that jealousy i guess people like you're trying to like make something or follow your dreams people will, like want to bring you down i agree with that but being a little bit older, I feel like it is not that they necessarily maybe want to bring you down. It's that they cannot even conceptualize that you think or you have the confidence in yourself to be trying something so yeah. big. Right. Because that's what I would think of. Like when you hear celebrities and stuff talk about like, oh, yeah, my teachers told me I couldn't do this and to get a regular job. Like, OK, that may sound mean to you mm-hmm. at this point now because you've made it to successful. But think about that regular person in their regular life teaching hundreds of kids every day like you. They're not trying to speak ill into your dream or, or, or talk down to you. They're trying to tell you to be practical about your life so you have a shot. Yeah. If you so happen to be the person that is exceptional and you're going to keep going, that's only proven with time. Nobody knows that the first time you're coming up to them, telling them whatever plan you have. Yeah. Or yeah, when you go on Star Search and you lose, mm-hmm. then you come back to school and the kids are, oh, you thought you was going to be famous. <laughs> Look at you. You Good. lost. You're one of us. Don't ever try to think you're not one of us. Mm-hmm. That's more what it is. Than yeah. They don't believe in you. So we, they don't believe in anything. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and like you going out thinking you can do this thing kind of shines a light and makes mm-hmm. maybe even people feel insecure within themselves like oh she can try this and, and she did even end up on tv and damn mm-hmm. like i'm not great at anything i'm not right i couldn't get on the local news for nothing you know <laughs> damn so, yeah. so like with you mentioned fashion mm-hmm. uh we cannot skate over or not like um not mention especially with now being so like we're not we're gonna totally i hate the word woke that's so dumb okay but yes but yeah so like everything's politically correct or trying to. At that time, it was a totally different time. Yes. People, at some point, Christina had the... Uh, before Ariana Grande had her levels of spray tan, Christina had her levels of spray tan. So she oh, was, yes. like, very dark. Yes. At some point, she did definitely, like, play around her look. At some point, I remember she had her cornrows. Mm-hmm. And then... Her eyebrow piercings. All her piercings, <laughs> you know. And at one point, oof, it was kind of cringe. It's a cringe for sure. She had her black scent. Okay. The only reason why I remember that year. Yeah. 
I kind of didn't think of it as maybe cultural appropriation and stuff like how people would now. Yeah, we I put, didn't think about it. I put her more in the Gwen Stefani box of cultural appreciation. Okay. Like, I like these people so much and I'm hanging out with them and rappers and stuff and I'm mm-hmm. trying to catch that vibe. Yes. So I'm dressing in the hip hop style. True. And I'm presenting in the hip hop aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Because even Justin Timberlake had cornrows before and wore a bandana. Oh, he did. I totally forgot. So it was the style people were trying to use yeah. the hip ghetto fabulous. And then also I think it wasn't such a thing like in a derogatory way. It's more so like admiring that style. Yeah. And then I didn't, uh, also I didn't look at it like, oh, she's being fake or she's being a poser because she had other eras. Like I remember when she dated uh, Jack Osborne and she was being like a goth girl or rock star mm. adjacent. So crazy. Yeah, you're just having your themes. Yeah. Janet Jackson, you know. Oh, she, yeah. And I just learned from today that you, you apparently were emo or yeah, a goth girl. That's yeah. so random. I cannot be fully goth because I live with old Christian black people. So I had to be like punk. So I could wear a lot of black in those plastic bracelets and listen to... Um, Ashley Simpson. Ashley Simpson, <laughs> yes. Who are some of the other people? But who are like the actual people? Oh, I got in trouble for listening to Marilyn Manson. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, I liked like corn songs. What? System of a Damn. Oh my gosh, how uh, funny. Yeah. What about like... Um, and then I did like regular pops of like Fall Out Boy and all that. Oh yeah. And I wanted to go, I think it was specifically Fall Out Boy or another band, I cannot think of their name. Uh, all American Reject. Oh my gosh, that they're like pop punk. Yes, like and there was just so another fun people, I cannot think of their name. Mm. But anyways, I wanted to go to the concert. And then it was like, as soon as I was going to ask, it came on the news that there was a rock concert and you know, people mosh. Oh, yeah. And like there were injuries and stuff. My grandma's like, see what they're doing to that music you listen to. Look at this. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Like, I'm never going to get to go now. Damn. You'll never see their dirty little secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what, what is that? I'm trying to think of that song I like so bad. Oh, yeah. I hope it gives you hell. Oh, yeah. Great song. And also, Move Along. Move, move along. along. Love Move Along. Yes. I also liked, what is it, Green Day? Don't want to be an American idiot. idiot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, Christina and I had our time. Yeah. With the Rock White Boys. Right. You know? I would, I would say our time in the sun, but it was definitely time in the shade because they were very pale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gross. <laughs> like yes. Edward from Twilight. Mm, so pasty. So pasty. And then also, she was like on the Osborne show, maybe once or twice. Yes. And that sister was so mean to her. Yeah, should they hate each other, right? Yeah. So or I, at least Ke- uh, Kelly, Kelly hates, hates her. her. Yeah. So I was just like. Yes. So weird. I thought she just hated her because she was prettier. I mean, probably. Yeah. But also, interesting um you know i think she dated jack like briefly yes but also kelly hated her christina and after like the osborns moved out and i guess they filmed the series at that house Mm -hmm. they moved christina bought that house and that was like her house where she had the baby with the golf like yeah aesthetic Mm -hmm. whoa how creepy yeah Mm. so she just wanted you guys life she didn't really like your brother she was scoping the scenery out yeah she's like well how many rooms this got in here yeah (laughs) Uh, i like this crown molding (laughs) (laughs) okay bye i'll see you later yeah there was no zillow back then so she couldn't lurk no to get in (laughs) (laughs) oh christina great job yeah excellent real estate portfolio yes (laughs) gosh (laughs) Oh, it's been so fun. Yeah. Crossover episode. This is yes. like, I don't know about Marvel, so I can't make any references. Oh, yeah. When Neither do I. Captain I America comes to save the Hulk. Does, is that the same series? I, I don't know. Like I said, you guys can tell us in the comments. Yeah. Oh, I know. It could be like when Superman and Batman get together and save the world. Yes. That's what we're doing here. Clearly. Okay. Go listen to our fashion podcast. It's called That's Hot. And follow us all over social medias. And... For my personal archive and and accolade, please let me know if there is some sort of degree that I could obtain with my knowledge in pop culture. Mm, True. Could I be a PhD in MTV? (laughs) MTV. (laughs) BET. Could she she go teach a BET course at like Harvard? Yes, Yale. (laughs) VH1. Yes, VH1. I'm going to tell you about all the you ought to know artists. Oh my gosh. (laughs) From 2000. Is it the one that had the pop-up? That no, would just come on? Yes. Yes, VH1, you ought to know. Oh my gosh, I love that. The first one I can remember is Duffy. Well, also, oh yeah, Duffy, oh my gosh. And, uh, you know, all the like, was it MTV or Behind the Music? Yes. Yeah, I wish they brought that back. Love that. That's what this is. That's what we're doing. Behind the Music. Behind the Music, MTV Diary. Yeah, love you that. think you know. But you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.